because if you believe this thing, you have to believe this thing because the world is a matrix of interlocking oppressions and 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 to fight against one oppression is to fight against all oppression necessarily and and to fight it at the grand scale is uh, uh, to fight it at the small scale is to fight it at the grand scale so you so so white supremacy is in our food it's in our it's at the makeup counter but it culminates in the Christchurch killer <laughs> and it culminates in american society with all of these identifiable statistically statistical disparities and outcome that are evidence of the same transhistorical all pervading force that is present at the micro level to the macro level right and 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 that and that if we want to be good people who are aligned with the powers that be that are now aligned with this project and derive their moral justification for it and so like you know like uh, I always want to quote, quote the tweeter who said that you know so like woke capitalism what's going on there like it is about taking consumerism and applying the 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 power of moral compulsion upon it right and so why would corporations not do that right and so like and then why would they not then align themselves with all of the great and good in society who are in turn aligned with it and then, and then those who resist you increasingly become an enemy class along a, a whole series of dimensions. And what this does is, it is a, it is a, um, it is a remedy for what Fukuyama called the terminal boredom at the end of history. Right? There is there, there is a need for people educated past a certain point to identify themselves with some great moral cause and in the absence of a deity, in the absence of a, a, a spiritual world um, and, and in the need to identify themselves with a moral vanguard, um, it, we can just invent one right. and people will buy it because the machinery is there to spread it and they'll actually believe it. <laughs> and, and, and so I, I don't, I think you know a lot of like kind of like people, older people in the in the media industry, who definitely didn't think this way ten years ago. Are they just kind of treading water and accommodating themselves to it, or are they dealing with cognitive dissonance by converting to to to, to some degree or other? I I really don't know the answer to that. Um, I suspect more of the latter than the former, actually, because it's easy to do, and it, and there's so much social approval for that and you are only going to there's also a slight fear however i mean one of the things i another i it's it, it, go read um another leaked transcript of a town hall at the atlantic after they hired then fired kevin williamson and to just <laughs> follow the words of jeffrey goldberg as he attempts to both suck up to but not completely cede all authority to Tanahasi coats. And uh, it's it's it is just an absolutely <laughs> excruciating way in which this person who has, you know, basically zero <laughs> principles about anything, uh, seeks to find a way to remain powerful in the established networks of Washington journalism in, in front of a crowd where clearly Jeffrey knows that if push came to shove, the guillotine would be for him next. And there's that uh, there's that slight concentration of the mind that these and the last thing any liberal-minded journalist wants to be described as is a dinosaur who prevented change and was therefore gotten rid of and that is the last thing they want to hear about them so it's the last part of their identity they could ever possibly imagine uh and and career is and power is by far the most one thing we've learned in both in politics and in culture and in media in the last uh, let's say seven or eight years is I, I i i always thought people were sometimes a little overly cynical about human motivations but i realize i'm under cynical i i need to be more jaundiced towards these people and their facility with whatever they decided to call their principles and that goes for the you know, in Washington, the, 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 the sane, intelligent Republicans who are just lying 
through their teeth all the time about this crazy person that was their president and can't ever acknowledge in public what they obviously acknowledge in private. And then the remaining right. elites in the media who are just terrified of these people and doing their best to suck up to them. And, and, and many of them, I think, someone like Ron Brownstein, for example, we just, got, just switched massively over. Peter Beinart, just, whoa, we're, we're now, we're really there. It's like, you're not just a fellow traveler, you're a fucking vanguard figure. Uh, and I, yes, I, my breath, I wouldn't say it's been taken away, but there's been a certain amount of several intakes of breath over the last few years as I watch these people's inability to defend, defend, for example, the right of an editor to publish what the hell he or she wants, period. That's the whole point. They have authority. Uh, it doesn't help also that, of course, at the same time, these, these newspapers and magazines have become massive enterprises, much bigger than they used to be. Uh, you know, something like The Atlantic, which is still a wonderful magazine, does great things. I know plenty of great writers for it and, and produces really good journalism still, but nonetheless, uh, you know, it's clear that, that uh, the, where it's headed and what, what it's really reflecting. And it's certainly not challenging power.